So everyone, um, when we talk about consonant sounds, we can distinguish one kind of sound to others by understanding the properties. So there are three things. Number one is Hello everyone, welcome to English Phonetics and Phonology course with me Suprayogi. So in today's video, we are going to learn about consonant sounds, which is uh, the discussions on voicing, place of articulations, and manner of articulations. So what are the objectives of this uh, video? Number one is that you will be able to explain the concept of voicing and then place of articulations and manner of articulations, especially in the context of English phonology. And number two is that you are able to mention the types and place of articulations, as well as the manner of articulations of consonant sounds. So to begin with, let's take a look at the definitions. So what is consonant sounds actually? So consonant sounds is actually the sounds in any language that produced by stopping uh, the air from flowing easily through the mouth and also especially by closing the lips or touching the teeth, lips with the tongue. So as opposed to vowel sound with no obstructions or uh, the airflow from uh, our speech organs uh, that is not limited by other speech organs. So that is the definitions of consonant sound. So everyone, um, when we talk about consonant sounds, we can distinguish one kind of sound to others by understanding the properties. So there are three things. Number one is voicing. Number two is place of articulations. And number three is manner of articulation. So there are three. Voicing, place of articulations, and manner of articulations. Now, before we start, I'll give you the charts of International Phonetics Alphabet or IPA. So you see the tables on the screen that there are um, lots of phonetic symbols and there are a lot of terminology like plosive, affricates, uh, zami vowels, bilabials, glottal velars, and etc. These are the charts of IPA where actually all the sounds, consonant sounds in the world can be classified here. But we want to talk about English uh, consonant sounds. We only talk about 24 sounds in English. So there are 24 consonant sounds in English that we will discuss one by one after this. So now let's take a look at the first part of our discussions. We are going to talk about voicing. So in consonant sounds, there are two types of voicing. Number one is called as voiced sound. And number two is voiceless sound. Voiced sound and voiceless sound. All right, so what is actually the definitions of the voice sound? Voice sounds happen when the vocal cords vibrate when the vocal cord vibrates. What are the samples of these? We have B sound, D sound, Z sound, and B sound. Okay, so those are happens uh, when the vocal cords vibrate, say B and Z. So that is the vibrations that you feel here. As opposed to voice sound, we have voiceless sound where there is no vibrations in it. Let's take a look at the samples of the sounds. S sound, and then K sound, and then uh, T sound. Those are the samples of voiceless invoicing of the consonant sound. I hope it's clear for you. We have two voiced and voiceless sound. So where uh, does 
this voicing located in IPA. So let's take a look at the table again or the IPA charts. So uh, we have two sounds sometimes in one column. So the sounds in your um, left when you see the screen, the screen, it's called as voiceless sound and in your right is called as voiced sounds. So for example, P is voiceless sound, B is voiced sound, T is voiceless sound, D is voiced sound, K is voiceless sound, and G is voiced sound, etc. until you find F and V, and then th and Z, and many more. So the first one or the left one called as voiceless, and the right one called as voice. Now, after we talk about voicing, now let's take a look at the place of articulations. So the first place of articulations is called as the bilabials, bilabial sounds. It means that the both lips are involved, the both lips, the, the upper lips and your lower lips involved. For example, we have uh, the sounds of m in the word man, man. So uh, upper lips and lower lips involved. Also the word bend, bend, All right? So the next one is called as labiodental sounds. What does it mean by labiodental sound? Labiodental dental sounds means that when the top front teeth touch the lower lip, okay? The top front of your teeth touch the lower lip, okay? So for example, we have the word fan. So we have the sound f in the word fan and then we also have the sound v in the word van so here fan and van that's called labiodental sound after we talk about labiodental now let's move to dental sound so it's quite similar we talk about dental means that we talk about teeth when we talk about labial we talk about lips Right, dental sound happen when the tongue touch the back of the front teeth. When touch the back of the front teeth. Okay, so we have the sample of the sound th in the word think and also the in the word that. So let's fill it. Th and that. So it happened here in the back parts of the front teeth th and th that's called as dental dental sound right after that let's talk about what we call as alveolar sounds what is alveolar sounds alveolar sounds occur when the tongue touches the alveolar ridge alveolar ridge so here we have the sound t for tin Z for the word zip, and then we have other um, sound like l, n, s, and z. So these uh, place of articulations of alveolar uh, occurred most uh, in the most of the English sounds. Okay, right. We also have what we call as palatoalveolar or postalveolar. So it happens between alveolar ridge and also hard palate. So this one, okay, it's um, inside of your tongue. You see, uh, you can feel the hard palate like, like here, okay? So it happens to the sound of sh, like in the word ship, and also in the sounds of j, like in the word measure, j, measure. So you can feel it sh and j measure and shape okay right the next one is that we are going to learn about palatal sounds palatal sounds happen when the tongue touches the palates it happened in the sound y like in the sample of word yet so it's not jet but yet 
okay? All right, what about the next one? We have uvular sounds that actually doesn't happen or occur in English, but it's occurred in Dutch and French. Also, furring ill that also happened in Dutch and French, but doesn't exist in English. The last one is velar sounds. So velar sounds happen when the tongue touches the velar here, like wait, um, it is um, getting uh, deeper and deeper inside here in your speech organ. When uh, we have the sample of k sound, k sound. So you feel it here inside, cap, and also ng sound, ng. Or in the Indonesian context, like uh, the letter of N and G, like ng, in the sounds of ng, sing, ng sound, sing. All right? So we have already discussed several place of articulation start from bilabial, labiodental, dental sound, alveolar sounds, palatalveolar or posalveolar, palatal, and then velar sound. Right, now let's move to the third part of the discussions. We're going to talk about the manner of articulations. So manner of articulations in uh, the world consonants consists of uh, several manners. Number one is plosive. Plosive means that there is a tiny explosions of the air occurs, like tiny explosions. Like we have the sound b, which is aspirated, and cum, which is unaspirated. Okay, like b aspirated and k unaspirated. Okay, so that's plosive sound. Plosive means tiny explosions. Number two is nasal sound. Nasal nose means that like there is a uh, air that passes the nose. Like we have the sound. M and then N and N. That's nasal. So you feel it here in your nose. Like M in the word map and then N in the word hang and etc. So after plosive and nasals, we have already uh, prepared you that another manner of articulations that is vicrative. Vicrative manner means that when air is escaped with difficulty and creating hissing sound, hissing sign, uh, sound like f or f, like you see the hissing sound here, f like in the word fin and f in the word fin. Okay, right. So that's uh, vicrative uh, manner of articulations, and the last one is the affricate sounds. Af uh, sorry, affricate manner of articulations. Aggregate manner of articulation means that it starts with plosive, like there is a tiny explosion, but ends with vicrative, like there is a hissing sounds as well, like the sound of ch, ch in the word church, and judge, judge in the sounds of j, like ch and j are in advocate manner of articulations. All right? Okay, so after we talk about voicing and then uh, place of articulations and manner of articulations, let's identify the differences between one sounds in English and other sounds in English, especially in consonants. All right, so after talking about three properties of the consonant sounds, uh, now let's come to the conclusions of this video. Number one, that consonant sounds uh, can be uh, identified into the, uh, its properties, that is uh, voicing, place of articulations, and manner of articulations. So why actually we uh, need to learn about this one? So consonant sounds helping you for many things. Number one is that you try to understand that English has many consonant sounds, but there are some consonant sounds listed in IPA there, but doesn't exist in English. So if you see the real IPA charts, there are a lot of sounds that doesn't exist in English. 
And number two is that uh, it is helpful where uh, when you look up the dictionary, especially when you read the transcriptions. So in the end, you can be independent learners. So you know how this um, its um, symbols actually uh, sounded. And the number three is that it is easier for you to learn a brand new language because you know the basic structures of, of its sounds itself. So after this, you can check the IPA charts in the websites, in the internet. You can choose in any website. You can have a more practice one by one how to pronounce uh, the sounds with bilabial, labiodental, velar, and etc. And then also with the manner of articulation from a uh, plosive, um, fricative, arricates, and many more. So get your practice and make sure that you really master for this one. So when you master for this one, in the end, it is easier for you to read aloud and also to uh, check the dictionary pronunciations. Then you can imitate this easily, right? So this is the end of uh, the sessions on understanding the voicing uh, manner of articulation and place of articulations of consonant sounds. I am Suprayogi. See you in the next video.